Welcome to the Business Clicks podcast, the podcast that interviews business owners to discuss their struggles, strategies, and successes with using the power of the internet to grow their business. We discuss the transition from brick and mortar growth strategies to digital alternatives. We provide new and exciting tactics each business can use to be successful in this new digital world. I'm your host, Adam Barbro, and let's get stuck in. So welcome to episode two of the Business Clicks podcast. Joining us today is Rin from Rinkem Lawyers. Hi, Rin. Uh, hello, Adam. <laughs> Before we get stuck <laughs> in, I wanted to ask you, Rin, um, what is one thing that you believe that will make a successful business in the years to come? Um, I think personal branding is very important because nowadays, you know, people, uh, they would like to know who they're dealing with directly. Uh, when it comes to big corporations, they don't have that kind of interaction. So, yeah, personal branding, I think, is the key. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I think it's, um, yeah, it's something that I'm obviously doing a lot as well. And I think you can see that with people, that people like buying from people, people they can trust. So, if you're able to build that trust up, that just makes it a bit easier to take out the middleman of the, of the brand and sort of build yourself up as that brand that people can connect with. Yeah, so I guess it's not just about letting the people know about your, you know, like ex- experience expertise, but, you know, they got to know what kind of person you are, what you care about. Yes, connection, um, so, connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, so, so yeah, Rin, how did you, um? so you've recently started your own business, but before we get into that, I want to talk about you've got quite a wealth of knowledge in terms of um, your legal profession. Did you want to quickly touch on that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so I have about 10 years of experience in personal injuries. Um, and I guess, you know, compared to some people, that's not a lot of years, but, you know, I, I know what I'm doing. And um, so actually, originally, I'm from Vancouver, Canada. So that's why you probably noticed that I have a bit of an accent. Um, you know, I don't really sound like Aussie. So, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so I just, uh, you know, studied law here at Bonn Uni on the Gold Coast uh, and decided to just stay and live here since I really love Australia. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. And um, did you always want to be a lawyer? Was that something that you just wanted to get, wanted to do from a young age or was it sort of when you got to that age where you started making decisions for the future that you thought maybe that was something that was more of interest to you? Uh, well, I guess I would be lying if I say that I've always wanted to be a lawyer but uh, that that was one of the you know job options that I've always had in my mind and um, you know with the skill set that I have I think you know it turns out to be a really great career option for me and yeah I actually really love being a lawyer yeah yeah great and why specifically did you or how did you find yourself sort of going down the personal injury side of law so when it comes to to being a lawyer, it's not always your choice as to what area that you would like to get into. It is a highly competitive area. So uh, that was the, you know, first area of law that I entered into. So, you know, I pretty much got stuck into it. Yeah. Yeah, right. I I know that feeling when you sort of get in something, you sort of build up a bit of knowledge and you get involved in it and you just sort of, I mean, it becomes a part of what you're doing day to day. Hey. Yeah. Well, I mean, I ended up liking it anyway, so, you know, it's, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Yep. I definitely, yep. Yeah. I was going to ask, because your industry is particularly interesting because you have a lot of, well, maybe not a lot, but you definitely have certain limitations around your ability to market yourself and to market your services. Yes, yes, yeah. How does that, so, I mean, you, you don't probably don't have to go into detail about all the limitations, um, but how does that sort of adjust how you make decisions in terms of marketing, both in the past and present around your business? Uh, it, it is very restrictive uh, as to the types of words that we, we are allowed to say in our advertisement. So we have to always uh, be you know kept up to date with the legislation um, and yeah, I mean, I guess that that's a bit of boring stuff and it's probably not relevant to most of the listeners. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess that's very important for most PI lawyers out there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that and that must, because I know you're quite um, active on social media, that must have an impact on how you want to produce content, does it? Or are you quite on top of it in terms of, well, 
I just won't touch those topics or I won't say certain things, but I can still produce content on a regular basis? I guess, I'm, you know, uh, the way I'm currently using social media at the moment is not specifically for personal injury advertisement. Um, it's more for personal branding. So I guess, you know, with social media, I don't really have to like, you know, look into things like that that carefully. But in terms of like newspaper and website advertisement, uh, I definitely have to double check all those things. Yeah. Yeah, right. So um, at the moment, what are your sort of areas that you are advertising in? You just mentioned newspaper as well as obviously online with your own website. Are the yeah. Yep. Um, so I'm, uh, I can actually speak Korean, but given that I was born in Korea, so I advertise uh, in the local uh, Korean newspaper. And also um, there's an advertisement on the Korean community website as well. Um, yeah. So those are the two main things that I do with the Korean community. Yeah, great. Because I know I, I do know you're in, quite involved with the community, and I think that's I think that's quite beneficial, right? Being able to have those group of people that you can connect with easily, and I definitely know um, from experience that a lot of those sort of cultural groups are quite close to each other and do have certain um, means, like these, you know, specific newspapers and online groups that you can um, access. Have you found them to be beneficial in terms of sort of getting your name out there with what the services you're offering? Uh, I guess. Just- you know, it's all about kind of finding your niche because, you know, if you are trying to uh, appeal to the general public, then you're not really going to have that much of luck because, you know, you're competing with the like hundred thousands of other companies that are exactly, you know, like you. So you got to find like-minded people or, you know, uh, people with similar interests, people with similar cultures, religion. So in my case, that you know like i'm korean so you know I, it was quite easy for me and like you know yes and at the same time i'm quite westernized so which is quite appealing to uh the korean community here in Brisbane. yeah yeah brilliant i want all the listeners to sort of take that in for a second as rin's saying it's not just being able to market yourself and market your services but being able to be quite specific in where you go there's a quite common acronym of the word focus, which is follow one course until successful. And I think that really talks down about niches, about making sure that you're concentrating on something and you're focusing on that until you become successful rather than just um, remaining general and going broad rather than deep. And I think you see a lot of successful businesses and a lot of successful business people do that really well. But I think it's difficult, right? Because you do get the temptation is to go and you know, want to try and serve anyone. But by doing that, you basically limit your ability to grow. Do you agree with that? Um, I guess, you know, of course, you, you're, uh, you're going to have to be able to service the other types of people as well. But, um, you know, you, you got to focus on marketing yourself to a specific group of people first in the beginning. Because if you try to target pretty much everyone, then you know, the fo- they're not going to really give you that much of attention since, uh, you know, they're saturated with all these uh, other companies' advertisements, you know. For example, like PI lawyers, if you just drive down on the highway, there are like hundreds of uh, like big billboard signs over the, you know, the big corporations. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think, I think if you look at that and you need to um, sort of take the approach that, the way you connect with customers and the way you connect with anyone is by having effective messaging. And effective messaging basically talks to your customer um, on a more on a more detailed or in depth level, you know, sorry, in depth level than you than other businesses will. So if you're able to be quite specific and niche in your approach and your messaging, that means that you're going to connect with those people better than the companies that are being quite broad in general. Yeah, yeah. So. Um I mean, you know, for example, like if uh, um, the listeners are uh, can only speak English, then um, maybe if they have a, like an interest in sports like soccer, then they could possibly sponsor like a local soccer team and can appeal to the, you know, moms and dads of the children. So, you know, um, I guess that's one way. And Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested you... Um 
mentioned before, obviously being quite involved with the Korean community. Do you have any ways or any um, strategies that you're using in, at the moment in terms of connecting with those people online, being able to do that at scale on a on, on using digital platforms rather than relying on maybe you know the old print media or anything like that? Uh, well, you mean in terms of connecting with the, the Korean community or just the, like the general public? Um, what, well, what well, a bit of both. I'm, I'm interested in yeah. seeing how you, um, what strategies you've maybe thought about or what strategy you've actually implemented in terms of using that niche that you've been talking about and then being able to find those people online. Because I know that with a lot yeah. of businesses, there's quite a difficulty in, yeah, they recognize their, who their niche is. But one of the most, mm. I think, under-leveraged strategies that businesses don't use is having the techniques to be able to target those people on the platforms that they're spending their time on. I know I spoke to Richard the other day, and we spoke about yeah. being able to find the attention of where the buyers and sellers are and using that effectively, and he's quite good at that. So I was wondering if you had done anything similar in terms of hopping online and being able to find that attention of that niche that you just mentioned. Uh, I guess it's just all about letting people know what you do and uh, let people know that uh, you know, you're know you a hardworking, uh, trustworthy, uh, motivated individual. Uh, I have my mobile um you know, uh, shown in most of my advertisement. The reason for that is uh, I just want people to know that if they're in any kind of a danger, let's say just got into a car accident and went to the hospital and they don't really know, then they can always rely on me and call me anytime. <laughs> like, so the other day, you know, uh, this guy called me at 6 a.m. on Sunday picked up the phone call and, you know, did a phone consultation with him right away. So I guess, you know, yeah, just that, that's one example I would say. Yeah, being, being, being able to be connected rather than being, I guess, you notice, I think with maybe a lot of other uh, law firms in particular, you might have to go through hoops to get to the um, well, particularly partners, but lawyers that you maybe particularly want to talk to. You're going through secretaries, a yeah. number of hoops, which sort of takes the um, personal touch out of it, particularly with the industry that you're dealing with, dealing with personal um, injuries. I think having yeah. a personal touch definitely makes more of that connection that we talked about earlier. Yeah, I think that's very important because if people have to, if they need your service, they want to access it right away. And if there is that barrier, then, you know, they're just going to go to someone else. So, you know, um, I guess just being uh, available, uh, maybe not 24-7, but <laughs> majority of the day, uh, I think that's the key to being a successful business owner. Just to, you know, make sure that uh, you're uh, always uh, uh, available for your clients. Yeah. Yeah, great. I think I think one of the best formats that people are sort of, that I try and get my um, clients top on board with and we're particularly designing websites and other means of um, being able to be contactable is re reducing that friction that you just talked about. So not just having your mobile phone there, but maybe having a contact page on your website, which people can click on and it goes directly to a um, platform that contacts you directly. It sends a text message to your phone or whatever it is. So you're able to do, uh, you know, there's other other ways that I think businesses can sort of take that approach that you're using. If they don't necessarily want to put out their mobile phone, other businesses yeah. can take the same sort of mentality and say, okay, but how do we re reduce friction? And there's so many mm. options out there that you can use on your website, on your social media, where people can get in touch with you by submitting and booking into your calendar straight away, sending you a text message as soon as they've submitted a form, et cetera. And I think that's really important from a digital marketing and building that connection perspective that you need to be looking to reduce friction as much as possible. I think that's one thing that you've done obviously very well with having your mobile up there. Yeah, but I guess I understand that not everyone can do that. So, you know, on our website, we do have an inquiry form uh, submission thing and like they can submit the inquiries anytime and, uh, you know, an email gets sent directly to my inbox. So, yeah. Yeah, right. I wanted to ask, while well, I've got you here, what is sort of the... What are the aspects of um, online marketing that, or maybe just being online in general as a business owner that you find difficult? Are there certain aspects that, you know, a struggle from, from, your, from your perspective? I think people, they have to really know the, um, you know, fine line uh, between being 
professional or being, you know, personal. Because I noticed that for many people, they started posting a lot of pictures on Instagram. Uh, I guess, you know, I, I might have made some mistakes in the past as well. Um, they often post to pictures that are too personal and maybe uh, that are not, you know, that professional. So I guess you got to have to have that in your mindset all the time before actually putting it to, in the public. Because, you know, they, they will judge you based on what kind of the photos that you put up on your social media. So even though you think, oh, you know, maybe me partying here and holding a beer looking a bit tipsy is okay, then maybe that's not okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think I think, and I think it's for the business owner to really look at that as uh, industry specific um, balancing line as well. I think you know, for some industries, their um, the expectation of the person that you're going to be working with is that they're a lot more professional and grounded with what they're doing. Whereas I think other industries, yeah. maybe you can push that limit a bit more because the expectation is for that person to be you know to be different from what you know a lawyer would be compared to a professional athlete, perhaps. So I think that I, I agree with you 100%, and I think that balancing act is is not necessarily a line, you know, down the middle of the field. I think the line moves depending on who your business is and how you present your business as well. I think that can even change if you're if you look at your niche and you look at your specific target market and think who is my ideal customer. Well, that line could yeah. be different depending on who your ideal customer is. If your niche of mm. who you're targeting are a more conservative group, then yeah, I agree with you. You need to be very careful about crossing that line between professionalism yeah. and um, personal. But I think alternatively, if the ideal customer group that you're targeting is someone who is you know, more relaxed and more fun, maybe they're a younger group or however it is, then you can sort yeah. of push that line a bit more because you know, well, these people actually respond to me based on this. I'll give an example of that. I've seen a group recently. I think they're a Sydney-based law firm, and wow. they're targeting a um, – just by the content they're putting out, they're very clearly targeting a group, a younger, probably more radical group of people, and therefore the um, language that they use in their videos can often mm. be seen as crude if you were going to target a different group, but that that works for them and who they're targeting. So I think it's yeah. that's an important aspect there of sort of looking at that. But I definitely agree with you. I mean, I know, for example, that we teach um, businesses mm -hmm. when we sit down and talk to them about content, we teach yeah. a method called the JK5 method where we get them to pick five different categories um, for their content, and that's a yeah. mix between personal and professional. So we might say, okay, you know, if you're a – uh, just being an example, if you're a coffee shop owner and, you're, and we're talking to you about content, I'm going to use the JK5 mm. method. We're going to talk about, okay, let's pick three things that you can talk about, different aspects of coffee or, a, or running a cafe on a daily basis. And then let's pick two yeah. personal, personal aspects. It might be you getting up to do your morning run before you open the coffee shop. And you know that some people will connect with that, particularly the you know other runners and cyclists in the area that might want to stop by after their run. So I think it's mm. I think you know that's something that we definitely teach is that mix between professional and personal because as you mentioned earlier yeah. on the personal brand comes into a big aspect of connecting with people and businesses in this day and age. Yeah, I mean like you want to let to your audience know who you are but the, you you they don't need to know everything about you. So I guess you know that's uh, something important for people to consider. Yeah. Definitely. What do you think um what do you think the future, particularly in your industry, if we're talking about, um, you know, personal injury lawyers specifically, how do you think the how do you think the future and technology and using marketing online is going to change in your field? If we're looking, you know, five years or ten years into the future, do you think there's going to be a dramatic change in how people are sort of putting themselves out there? Do you reckon it's going to continue to push more to that personal brand? I think so. The reason is because I know that uh, there. Even more lawyers, so, you know, starting out on their own. Um, I don't know why that is, but uh, since COVID, you know, there are way more people starting out on their own. Um, and I think there, there will be a bigger focus on personal branding, um, especially in the area of the personal injuries, because, you know, these are like vulnerable people who need urgent help. And they don't want to just contact a big corporation and, you know, um, it's just going to be tossed around 
uh, with the, you know, hundreds, thousands of other cases that these big corporations have. So, yeah, I, I think um, digital marketing, personal branding, those are going to be like very even more important in the future. Yeah, definitely. I think it's um I think I think this was a great chat and I think it was definitely worth sort of you know, a lot of the things you said are very are very um foundational in what most businesses should be doing in in terms of their marketing, which is finding your niche, creating a bit of a personal connection and reducing friction of being able to have people contact you easily. Because I know too often you look at businesses and it's just too hard to get in touch with them. And then you're just gonna have people go, Oh, screw it, I'll go find someone else because that that, mm. that friction is just too much. I mean, you look at a brand like Amazon and their success in just having a, you know, buy now one click button. And I think it's no different from any other business. People want to be able to have that one click button to be able to get in contact with you. So I think some of the, um, yeah. some of the tactics and strategies that you're implementing are very useful and should be foundation, foundational to all businesses out there, particularly moving forward um, as a more online um, platform. I just wanted to thank you um, for joining us today for the podcast, Rin, and for the people listening, if they wanted to get in touch with you or learn more about you and your business, where should they go? Uh, they can just simply Google my company name, which is Ring Kim Law, and uh, it will direct to you to our uh, company website and our contact details are up there. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. And that is episode two of the Business Clicks podcast. I'm your host, Adam Barbro. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Business Clicks podcast. 